Stimulation, erection, emission, and ejaculation are four uh, concepts in the male reproductive act that are sometimes misunderstood by students. Which are innervated by sympathetics? What about parasympathetics? Which ones are somatic? Which one's innervated by the pudendal nerve? What about the pelvic splanchnic nerve? And what about that sacral splanchnic nerve? Well, the purpose of today's lecture is to cover the innervation that results in stimulation, erection, emission, and ejaculation. So our take-home message first, the stimulation is by the pudendal nerve, somatic sensation, general sensation of pain, temperature, touch, and so forth. Erection is done by parasympathetics via the pelvic splanchnic nerves. Emission is the first part of ejaculation done by sympathetics via lumbar and sacral splanchnic nerves. And ejaculation is the second part, really, of ejaculation. And that's by the pudendal nerve and its somatic innervation. So there is all of the key concepts we're going to cover. We're focusing on stimulation in the pudendal nerve first. So first, Simulation of the genitals occurs. Now, there's actually a cerebral component to this as well that we're not going to cover in this uh, lecture. Then that stimulation sensed by the pudendal nerve, which is conducted to the S234 spinal cord via the pudendal nerve. So here is a, um, it's a male pelvis and perineum. It's a parasagittal section just off the side. There's the penis, there's the bladder, there's the rectum, and there's where the side of the sacrum to get yourself oriented. And so, stimulation of the genitals, I think that's pretty much all we have to say. That happens. Now, what occurs is here we have now this uh, lithotomy position or the spread eagle position of the male reproductive system. And there uh, is showing the, the scrotal sac. The penis is on the other side. But when stimulation of the perineum occurs, it's sensed by the pudendal nerve. And there is that pudendal distribution highlighted there. And then what happens is, the pudendal nerve now conducts this stimulation to the S234 spinal cord. And the pudendal nerve is the one responsible for this. And so now we're going to go back to this parasagittal section, go in gray scale, and show the pudendal nerve. So the pudendal nerve is going to course from the genitals, or basically the perineum, so penis, scrotum, anal region, all the way back to the S234 spinal nerves. Those are the ventral rami. And now if we uh, continue with this same conduction back to that cord, there's the perineum, and there's the S234 spinal cord levels, and there's a branch of the pudendal nerve, and notice it's going in the dorsal root, and there's a dorsal root ganglion, and it happens for all three levels. There's stimulation. Now stimulation is going to then result in an erection, and the erection is uh, caused by parasympathetic nerves coursing uh, parasympathetic neurons coursing in the pelvic splanchnic nerves. So parasympathetics, the cause erection, are going to arise in the lateral horn gray matter of the S234 spinal cord. And then the pelvic splanchnic nerves are the vehicle to go to the preaortic and prostatic plexuses that will go to the penis. And then nitric oxide, not no, but nitric oxide causes vasodilation of the deep penile arteries and then blood fills the erectile tissue and compresses the veins. <coughs> So here's a cross-section of the spinal cord. This is actually lumbar. I totally know that. I just didn't have a sacral cord with the roots and rami, so just kind of pretend that sacral cord, all right? So there's an S234 spinal cord levels, and the cell bodies, the preganglionic parasympathetic cell bodies, arise from the lateral horn. <coughs> and as the saying goes, S234 keeps the penis off the floor. Actually, I'm not sure who said that, but there's a saying to help remember what spinal cord levels are going to cause an erection. The pelvic splanchnic nerves are the ones that are going to then transport these preganglionic parasympathetic neurons to the preaortic and prosthetic plexuses that will eventually go to the penis. So find the ventral ramus and add a pelvic splanchnic nerve onto that. That's where it comes off, right at the uh, root, or uh, bad word, use of a word there, right at the uh, origin of that. Uh, ventral ramus. And then the um, axon courses out the ventral root into the ventral ramus and out that pelvic splanchnic nerve to go to the preaortic and prosthetic plexuses. So let's do it again, <coughs> except right here we've got the spinal cord and there's the S234 spinal cord levels and there's a pelvic splanchnic nerve and there's a pelvic splanchnic nerve and there's one that I'm not sure what happened to my illustration, but it's supposed to be a pelvic splanchnic nerve as well. And we have our cell bodies arising in the lateral horn. You don't see the lateral horn, but 
pretend it's there. And then it's this uh, axon is going to come out the ventral root, ventral ramus of that pelvic splanchnic at all three levels, and then go to the preaortic and prostatic plexuses. And that's usually where the synapse occurs, though the synapse can actually occur inside the penis as well, and I don't care if you know that or not. Now, the pelvic splanchnic nerves are those nerves that are highlighted there. Okay, so there's pelvic splanchnic nerves, which then go into our preaortic plexus. And at this segment of where we're at in the pelvis, this is what's called the inferior hypogastric plexus. And then from there, it's going to go around the prostate, which is highlighted in orange there. And then there's this prostatic plexus, this continuation, that then takes these neurons or these nerves out into the penis. So there's our pelvic splanchnic nerves that give rise to our preaortic and prosthetic plexuses that then go off into the penis. And that's where we're headed to then these parasympathetic nerves to cause an erection. So here we've got a cross section or the penis in cross section. I illustrated this in graduate school, though my wife thinks it kind of looks like uh, a South Park character. And also she said, hey, it looks like Steve the monkey from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. But as a result of that, I think I better help you know what some of these structures are. So there is our central artery of the penis. And the central artery in the penis in this longitudinal section is located here. It's a branch off our internal pudendal artery. And then our corpora cavernosa, and it's paired on either side of the uh, dorsal aspect of the penis. And here in this longitudinal section, all of this erectile tissue that's responsible for being engorged with blood, that then that deep fascia on the outside uh, tightens, and that's why the penis becomes erect. The urethra. There's our urethra, and in this longitudinal section, it's this uh, tube that's going to take urine out from the bladder, or <coughs> during an ejaculation, just take semen out, and we'll see why urine's not going to mix in a few minutes. And then there's the corpus spongiosum, which is some erectile tissue that surrounds the shaft of the penis and becomes part of the gland's penis. Okay. And then there's our dorsal penile veins, and there's a bunch of other veins, but these are the veins that are going to be compressed to uh, prohibit uh, blood from draining. So nitric oxide is going to cause the vasodilation of these deep penile arteries. So there is our deep penile arteries, and then when uh, that postganglionic parasympathetic neuron synapses at this central artery, nitric oxide is that neurotransmitter that then causes those vessels to, here we go one more time, dilate. When they dilate, blood is now going to fill the erectile tissue called the corpus cavernosum and a little to some extent the spongiosum, which I didn't illustrate here, but it's primarily the corpus cavernosum. And then <coughs> this penis is going to expand, and as it expands and becomes erect, it's going to compress those dorsal venous veins like that. And by compressing them, and it's actually a little bit more than that, you're going to inhibit the drainage of the uh, penis, so that's why the penis stays erect. And it will stay erect until either ejaculation occurs or the stimulation goes away. All right, so there's an erection. So now let's go to emission. So emission is uh, the beginning part of ejaculation, and it's initiated by the sympathetics via lumbar and sacral splanchnic nerves. So the sympathetics arise, and remember all sympathetics arise between T1 and L2, for ejaculation, it's that caudal part of that or origin, and that is lateral horns of T10, T11, T12, L1, L2, down to the L1, L2 level, but it's basically that bottom part of the sympathetic cord. Then the lumbar and sacral splanchnic nerves are going to take those sympathetic pathways to the preaortic plexuses, which will then go to the spermatic tubes, and then synapse and norepinephrine is then going to cause peristaltic contractions of ductus deferens, seminal vesicles contract, prostate, prostate gland contracts, and then you get contraction of the internal urethral sphincter. So here we've got the spinal cord, and there's the T10 and then T12 and L2 levels that have been highlighted, and in the middle you've got the aorta and the preaortic plexuses. So there's a cell body that's arising in the lateral horn. You can't see lateral horn, you just got to imagine it's on there. And they're going to then transport, uh, the lumbar splanchnic nerves are going to then transport the sympathetic neuron. And there we have it coming right out of the ventral root, ventral ramus, in through the white ramus communicans, and then out that sympathetic ganglion in what we know as a lumbar splanchnic nerve. This happens at each of the lumbar levels. And it's going to go down to the preaortic plexus. And then what's happening is our inferior hypogastric plexus of nerves 
just part of the preaortic plexus, is then going to transport these sympathetics out to the uh, appropriate organs. The sacral splanchnics are also responsible because some of these pathways are going to descend, these preganglionic sympathetics descend to an inferior adjacent sympathetic ganglion and then course out a sacral splanchnic nerve to synapse in that preaortic plexus, which then an inferior hypogastric plexus and nerve will take it out to the associated anatomy. So there we've got lumbar and sacral splanchnic nerves course to the preaortic plexus, and then the infrahypogastric plexus and nerves take it out to the um, associated spermatic tubes. And this happens at all levels of T10 down to L2, usually the focus down at the bottle, bottom area, but any of those levels, it's possible. Um, now, here's this parasagittal view again of that male reproductive system. In yellow there, we see a sympathetic ganglion, and then you see all those sympathetic ganglia that make a chain. There's our sympathetic chain. And then there's our lumbar splanchnic nerves, and there's our sacral splanchnic nerves that then give rise to a preaortic plexus. A in and there you've got hypogastric nerve and infrahypogastric plexuses, which then gives rise to a uh, prosthetic plexus which then t goes out to the spermatic tubes um, uh, down to the uh, ductus deferens and proximal part of the urethra. So, sympathetic chain, lumbar and sacral splanchnic nerves, uh, preaortic plexus, prosthetic plexus, and out to the uh, spermatic tubes. All right, and then what is norepinephrine going to result in? What's it going to cause when, it's, when this neurotransmitter binds? Well, it's going to cause peristaltic contractions in this ductus deferens as it moves <coughs> this emission phase is taking sperm, uh, live sperm from the epididymis up this ductus deferens all the way to the back of the ejaculatory duct. In a sense, think of it like uh, putting a bullet in the chamber of the, of the rifle. It's now ready to, it's getting ready to fire. It hasn't fired yet, but it's getting ready to fire. Then there's our seminal vesicle in the back of the bladder, just above where the prostate is. Let's take this in a sagittal section now. There's that seminal vesicle again. It's paired on either side, and it's then going to secrete its contents into the ejaculatory duct to join with the sperm coming from the ductus deferens. That also occurs during this emission stage under sympathetic innervation. There's our prostate gland. It's going to secrete its prosthetic secretions into that ejaculatory duct and prosthetic urethra during uh, this emission phase. And then finally, there's the location of our internal urethral sphincter. It's smooth muscle. It's between the neck of the bladder and the prostate. It's constricted under sympathetic innervation during this emission phase. So that's making sure that urine and semen do not mix and that during ejaculation, semen doesn't go retrogradely into the bladder. So... There we've got emission. Now let's go to finally ejaculation done uh, somatically under the influence of the pudendal nerve. And so impulses are going to arise from the ventral horn of the gray matter of the S234 spinal cord levels. And then the pudendal nerve conducts this motor impulse voluntarily through rhythmic and causing rhythmic contractions of the bubble spongiosis and ischiocavernosus muscles. And uh, yeah. So let's talk about first the impulses coming from S234 ventral horn. Here we've got the spinal cord. There's S234, and there's our, um, our cell bodies of these somatic motor neurons. You have to imagine they're in the ventral horn because you can't really see it uh, at that level. And then the neurons are, then the pudendal nerve is going to conduct that impulse from those ventral rami out, and we call that the pudendal nerve. So you said, we've already talked about pudendal nerve. Because it's a somatic nerve, it's mixed. It's got motor and it has sensory. So now we're talking about the somatic motor component. It's then going to cause rhythmic contractions of the bulbospongiosis and ischiocavernosus muscles that are found at the base of the penis. And it's skeletal muscle. And so even though once uh, ejaculation occurs, it can't be stopped. It's basically these, there's a certain threshold of impulses that arise in that uh, caudal part of the spinal cord. And once it courses, uh, uh, starts, it can't be stopped. Um, and then it's going to go to the skeletal muscles. So this is what's an interesting thing. This part of ejaculation really is accomplished because of rhythmic contractions of these skeletal muscles but it has that some influence by the autonomic nervous system. It's pretty neat. So in this parasagittal section, there's our bubble spongiosis and ischiocavernosus muscles or parts of them that you can see. 
and then there's our S234 ventral rami, and there's a pudendal nerve that comes off, providing innervation to those muscles. So here we've got stimulation, erection, emission, and ejaculation, and how somatic, parasympathetic, sympathetic, and somatic nerves are going to uh, cause each of these elements of the male reproductive act to occur. Thank you very much.